three, two, one. Hello, my friends. Today, we're gonna to make something called blackout poetry. Now, I'm gonna show you some images that show you what blackout poetry looks like. The first time I heard about blackout poetry, it was because of a man named Austin Cleon. Austin Cleon lives in Texas. And Austin Cleon used to take newspapers and use markers to black out most of the words and leave some that he thought sounded really good together. This was his poetry. But there are some other kinds too. Now I'm gonna show you some pictures of some blackout poetry that isn't black, but has different colors and different shapes and different kinds of drawings on it. So take a look. There are some really nice colored blackout poetry pictures here. You can look on Google if you wanna find some others, but these are some of my favorites. I especially like this tree. Now, there are some videos online that will tell you how to make really nice blackout poetry. And I'm gonna show you two. So I've got some different pages from some books and my cat is really interested in this, so we'll see what he thinks too. Um, this is Hobbes over here. Hobbes has to be in the room with me, I guess. So I have some pages here that I'm gonna use for the blackout poetry. And um, these pages are from a book. Austin Cleon used newspaper pages, but newspapers are pretty hard to find right now. So I took some books that Miss Duke was gonna throw away, and those books are what I use to rip the pages apart for you all to draw on. I like having something that I don't really know what's on it yet, so I can just find some words that I like the look of. And I'll tell you a secret. I think poets do this sometimes too. They will actually find words that they like the sound of and put them together to make a poem and then try to make them se make sense afterwards. So I'm going to find some words. Let's see. I like the word pine. And I don't have to keep these same words when it, once I'm ready. I can actually get rid of them. I like meadow. I like leafy green and earth, nest, ooh, dragon. I guess this was a fairy tale. Peaks, of peaks of pine. I'm gonna make some, some lines that show how I want them to be read. So peaks of pine, leafy green meadow, patches of earth, dragon's nest. So peaks of pine, leafy green meadow, patches of earth, dragon's nest. Okay, that's not, not too bad. Once I've got my words, done, I'm actually going to take a mar black marker or a black Sharpie and I'm going to um, circle those and then I'm gonna choose what image I wanna use. Okay, so I got out my markers. I'm gonna start with my black marker. I want to make sure that the circles that I make around my words are big enough that I can still read the words. This is technically poetry, so I want people to be able to read it. It's really hard to make mistakes here. Really, it's only a mistake if you don't like how it looks when you're finished. But you can try more than once. Each page has two sides. Okay, so there's my words, and now I have to decide what I'm gonna draw. I think I'm gonna draw some of the things that are in my words. So I think I'm gonna draw a pine tree, and then probably, so I'm gonna use the words from my poem to figure out what to draw. And because I picked pine, I'm gonna do a pine tree, 
and then I'm going to do I think a nest over here so I'm gonna start with my pine tree and I could draw this with a pencil first but I think I can do okay without it if you want to obviously draw with a pencil first that's totally up to you so I'm gonna draw my pine tree So there's my pine tree so far. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to add um, a nest right now and I'll probably put some mountains in the background and I think I'm going to make the mountains gray and for that I'm going to use my black and to make gray with my black crayon I'm actually just going to draw really really lightly so I'm going to put some like mountain peaks in here. I'll put a little blue in the sky. I'm going to start my nest now, and I think I'm going to use some orange and some brown. So I'm going to start out with some orange, and it's, it's going to be, I think, behind the tree a little bit. Start out and then the nest is going to be all scribbly because it's a nest. It doesn't look much like a nest to me, but that's okay. I'm going to keep working on it until it does. All right, I think I'm done coloring with my crayons. And I think that looks as much like a nest as I'm going to be able to make it look. And I'm pretty happy with that. Peaks of pine, leafy green meadows, patches of earth, dragon nest. Okay, that works for me. Now, this doesn't look perfect. And there are some things I wish I could make a little different about it. But it's good enough. And remember the most important things as our friends from Art for Kids Hub tell us is to have fun and to practice. So I had fun and I practiced and I want you to do the same thing. When you start this assignment, there's really no way to make it wrong. You pick the kind of words that you like and once you picked those words, you circle them. Just find some that you like, find some that sound good. You can pick words randomly if you want. Pick any words that you want. And then when you're drawing, you can either do like I did and make the words and the picture go together, or you can draw your favorite thing. Or if you can't think of anything to draw, you can just draw some shapes. Okay, so that is my blackout poetry finished. I hope you make something that you like. And if you don't, try again. Thank you for watching and remember, now go make something.